Yes, Chris, great day for football here in October in Columbus. Kickoff seconds away as Ohio State plays its Big Ten home opener as we welcome you to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. The number two team in the country looks to stay unbeaten as the Buckeyes host Indiana. The Hoosiers played well against Michigan last week, but too much Denard Robinson. Will it be too much Terrell Pryor today for the Hoosiers to handle? With Hall of Famers Bob Greasy and Chris Spielman, I'm Dave Pash. Ohio State has won the toss and will receive. Jim Tressel told us before the game that he will not be limited at all in his play calling, says Terrell Pryor is good to go after hurting his thigh last week. You know, Coach Tressel doesn't lot of call a lot of run calls for Terrell Pryor. A lot of his yardage is made up off the scramble and what he sees as far as coverage. If he sees the coverage that he likes and he feels he can pick up with yardage with his feet, He'll certainly take advantage of that. We'll find out early how well he's running. Mitch Ewald will kick it off and Jordan Hall back with Jamal Berry to receive. Tressel told us yesterday we could see a lot of Hall at running back today. And he may shift Brandon Sane up to a receiver position at times. It'll be Berry taking it on the goal line for Ohio State. And out to the 29-yard line. Well, Terrell Pryor, Terrell Pryor last week threw for just 76 yards. He did rush for over 100. A lot of people concerned about the Buckeye offense after struggling for about three quarters against Illinois. They eventually pulled away and won by 11, but led by just four going into the fourth. But according to Tressel, Pryor is healthy. And he'll start in shotgun on first down at the Buckeye 29. Dan Heron starting the game and running back. He's leading the team in attempts prior to throw, and that's what we talked about seeing. Lined up at receiver, and he picks up the first down on the first play. Tenth catch of the year for Brandon Sane. Brandon Sane's been ineffective from the running back position. He's too good of an athlete. He's a track star out of high school, powerful runner. The best way to get him involved is get the ball to his hands out in space. Coach Tressel told us that Sane was the, his third best wide receiver on this team. So both wide both uh, running backs started uh, the ball game for the Buckeyes. Fire with a drop back throw here. And he's got Posey for another first down wrapped up at the Indiana 44 yard line. Two pass plays. For Ohio State to start the game, Zach Bourne, a very good fullback. Posey and Sansenbacher. Fragel starting for Jake Stoneburner at tight end. He's out with an ankle injury. Offensive line has struggled this year for Ohio State. They do have two seniors at the guard positions, Bourne and Browning, and Brewster, a three-year starter at center. And Adrian Burks is getting a start for Council out there, a corner, and not surprised that Coach Trussell goes on the attack against a young corner on the outside. 27 yards in two plays. And prior to throw again, open man again. Posey, out of shake a tackle, can't brought down by Terrence Thomas. Jim Tressel seeking his 100th win at Ohio State. He would be the third fastest in Big Ten history. This is his 121st game as the head coach of the Buckeyes. And Jim Tressel calls the plays. He is the offensive coordinator. He Looking at that play sheet, talks into his microphone. The, the uh, other players on the sideline have the headsets on. Wag the plays in for uh, Tr uh, Terrell Pryor. On second and five, draw play. Heron finds a hole at the 30-yard line. Heron breaks free at the 20. Heron, touchdown, Ohio State. So much for struggling offensively. Dan Heron had a big fourth quarter touchdown in Illinois, finished with a season high 95 rushing yards. He picks up where he left off with a 39 yard touchdown scamper. Four play, 71 yard drive. And Barclay with a point after 7-0 Ohio State. 
A lot of questions been made about this offensive line and open up holes. First of all, you're going to get a crackback block from a receiver that will come into your screen late. It springs the hole. Brandon Sane comes in and gets the block where he's at the beer pose. He comes in and gets enough of the safety where it allows Daniel Heron to view the hole, see the hole, and hit the hole. And an outstanding job for the guys up front of sustaining blocks. That's been a problem with the Ohio State offensive linemen. They make good contact but they don't sustain their blocks. And right there, you saw Mike Adams, number 75, sustain his block, which allowed Daniel Heron to get to the second level, then off to the races. And defensively, this Indiana defense has not been that stellar this year. They're last in the Big Ten in stopping the run. And a, another example of poor tackling there by the safety for the Buckeyes. Yeah, also poor angles, Bob. Yeah. Tackling's all about angles and understanding the speed of the opponent. And clearly, Indiana's defense has not adjusted to the speed of Denard Robinson last week and right now, Daniel Heron this week. Tandon Doss, a dangerous return man, accidentally kicked that one. And Doss can run. And he's brought down at the 30-yard line, so decent starting field position for Indiana. Well, much ado about nothing, perhaps, with uh, Terrell Pryor. Looked pretty good on that first drive, guys. Well, he stayed in the pocket, and he threw the ball. Didn't see any scrambling. I was on the field, saw the, the thigh was wrapped, though. But I don't think it's going to bother him today. No, when you talk to Coach Trestle, he understands how valuable he is to this team. And Terrell's not going to run unless he decides to run. In other words, I think Jim will protect him a little bit and not call any called runs like options or quarterback draws. Quarterback on the other side is pretty good, too. Ben Chappell, fifth-year senior starter, wears number four because his favorite player is Brett Farr. They run the pistol, and they will run the ball on first and ten. Trey Burgess, who's starting for the injured Darius Willis, who was a game-time decision and is out because of a groin injury. Burgess getting the call. Chappell last week set school records, 45 of 64 passing for 480 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. This is a pretty good offense. They're averaging 40 points per game. That's 13th best in the nation. But they're missing that guy right there. Darius Willis is the running back and their best offensive lineman. Chapel dumps it off to Burgess out of the backfield. They'll come up a few yards short of the first down. Or some feel that Indiana has the best receiving core in the Big Ten. Tanda Doss leads the conference in receiving yards per game. Belcher leads the league in catches. Offensive line has some injuries. Justin Pagan had been a starter at guard. He's out to tackle. Marquette had been a backup. He's starting today. And James Brewer, their normal starter at right tackle out with an ankle injury. The guy that was to replace him, Mark Damish, had a death in the family, so he's not here. Ohio State showing blitz on third and three. Here they come, and Chappell's pass caught for a first down. It's pulled in by Doss, who had 15 catches last week, tackled by Hines at the 49. Ben Chappell did a nice job. And, uh, here he comes into this ball game. Your best offensive lineman is out, and your top running back is out. He gets rid of the football. He knows where the guy that's going to be open quick, and that's Doss. Just pick up some first downs on this first drive of the ball game. 12-yard pass play, and on first and 10, Nathan Williams not fooled as Nick Turner, just his seventh attempt of the year, brought down for a loss of four. Now, we mentioned Williams. He's coming off an injury in camp, but he's playing well. Cameron Hayward, likely first-round draft pick on the other side. Two linebackers because Ohio State will be in nickel. Christian Bryant getting the start in the secondary. He's a true freshman. Tyler Moeller. Coming back from a head injury a year ago, tore a pec muscle last week. He is done for the season. Chapel finds Belcher, and he can't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Got maybe a yard on that play. Roll out in space, made the tackle. That's the 32nd catch for Belcher on the year. You know, they try that jailbreak screen outside. The problem is you have Torrance, number one playing in a press coverage so there's no space to create between wide receiver and defensive back. Also it does not allow the offensive lineman to get out there and throw a block. Again they're in press coverage. Torrance matching up one on one with Belcher.
Ohio State rushes three. And out of the backfield, a catch made by Turner. And he's brought down about four or five yards shy of a first down. See if Indiana kicks it here on fourth. Brian Roll tackling Turner. And Indiana will punt. That was a smart play by the quarterback. You know, you third, it was third, and it was second and 15. You're not going to pick that up very often, so don't make any mistakes. Just punt the ball away. Jordan Hall back to return the punt. Chris Hogger up from his 40-yard line. And Hall going to let that one sail deep into the end zone. So we'll come out to the 20. Terrell Pryor, 3-of-3 three three passing on that opening drive for the Buckeyes. I'm a set. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Back in Columbus, already 7-0 Ohio State, and the Buckeyes have the ball again. Terrell Pryor, 3-of-3 three three passing on that opening drive. Dan Heron, a 39-yard touchdown run. Brandon Sane in the backfield here for Ohio State on first and ten. And prior to throw again. And misfires trying to hit Sane out of the backfield. He was being covered by Matt Ernest. Ohio State averaging 44 points per game. A little inflated because they put up 73 against Eastern Michigan, the most points ever by a Jim Trestle Ohio State team. Fire under center here on second down. And Heron trying to get outside, can't spill in the backfield. Loss on the play as Leon Beckham is there for Indiana. Bill Lynch, the headband for the Hoosiers. In his fourth year, they have never defeated a number one or number two ranked team 0 in 26 lifetime. And their last win against Ohio State was back in 1988. Their last win here in Columbus, 1987. Right, Chris? Well, they're, I don't remember that, but they're very <laughs> competitive against some of the topper teams in the Big Ten. And it's just a matter of getting some athletes. He has athletes on offensive. Now, if he can gather a group of athletes on defense, he'll be able to compete and win the close ones that they lose. Fire with all day, airing it out for Sanzenbacher. And broken up at the last second by Donnell Jones. Yeah, he had him. Sanzenbacher was open. If he would just would have gotten the ball there a little bit quicker. Not put so much air under it, but... You see Sanzenbacher, if he throws it across the field, he threw it kind of down the field. Had good protection, had to wait in the pocket for a long time. I don't think we're going to see Terrell Pryor running across the line of scrimmage much today, boys. I don't think he's interested in running. I don't think he has to. I don't think he's going to have to. It looks like he's going to, their passing game is going to be pretty good. Ben Buchanan will punt it away to Tandon Doss. And it's fair caught by Doss at the 32. Ben Chappell was 4 of 4 passing on his first possession. He'll be back on the field when we return. From an early... ESPN's College Football is presented by Cards.com, where confidence comes standard. And the Capital One Cup. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com. Shot of the RPAC, the largest student recreation center in the country. They got everything here at Ohio State. Putting a good football team. Buckeyes ranked number two in the country. They went three and out on their last offensive series. Indiana running on first down. Nowhere to go for Burgess. And the Hoosiers got to be disappointed as Holman makes the tackle for the Buckeyes. Losing two starters in practice after last week against Michigan. 98 plays. They possessed the ball for almost 42 minutes. They dominated the game as far as time of possession. Michigan obviously didn't take long to score offensively. But when you lose a lot of guys and some of your best players, you lose Brewer, your right tackle. Darius Willis, the, the running back who um, is out in practice. I mean, you know, you don't want to hurt your players in practice. Chapel throwing it away, and it's picked off. Terrible pass. Devon Torrance with the INT for the Buckeyes. 
And bumped out of bounds inside the 40. Just the second interception thrown this year by Chapel, and the first for Torrance, an ex wide receiver. It's all about communication. And when you're not on the same page as a receiver, you're going to see what happens. He's going to run a hitch route where Chapel thinks he's running a go. Now, to me, it looks like the receiver is in right there because. Torrance was playing way off, so set the hitch. Chapel didn't read the corner. You read a corner, you throw a corner. Corner back, throw short. Corner up, throw deep. What may have happened is the quarterback, when he got up there, looked out and he was bumped. And then he didn't look out there again, and then the corner backed off, and the receiver says, hey, I'm running a hitch. It's communication, as always. Pryor hit in the backfield, gets out of there. Flag down. And Pryor steps out, and... Buckeye fans wanted another flag for a late hit. Jeff Thomas was chasing Terrell Pryor. Surprised Pryor didn't just throw that away. He stepped out of bounds and lost six yards, but let's see what the penalty is here. He was outside the pocket and everything. Just throw it away, right? That's one of the things he has to work on, and again, it's just a constant development of where he needs to get to. Holding number 70, offense. That penalty's declined. Second down. Probably wouldn't have been declined if it was second and ten, but because he lost six yards, it is. Brian Browning right there. Well, you know, it, it's the competitiveness of, of Terrell Pryor that, that doesn't want to get tackled. Now he wants to try and make something. Not not a late hit at all. He hit him well before he hit the out of bounds line. But you're right, Dave. He's got to make a decision. If the guy's wrapping him up, go ahead and throw a souvenir into the stands. Save yourself some yardage. Pryor. With time and a wide open man, Sansenbacher, right at the first down marker, picks it up to the 22 yard line. That's a gain of 17. Mitchell Evans and Leon Beckham downfield on the stop. Well, if you're going to bring in zone pressures, you're going to have holes in the defense, and you see two Indiana defenders chasing the short guy. Well, everybody knows every pass route is designed as a high and a low. If two guys chase a low, that means a high is going to be open, and it's just target practice for Terrell Pryor and Dane Sansenbacher. Pryor to pass again, going end zone, easy. Touchdown, Sansenbacher. Sansenbacher has become Pryor's favorite target. That's his seventh touchdown catch of the year. Down the middle, great protection, steps up, throws a strike. The same thing, he had two guys chase the short guy, as opposed to having one of those guys carry Sansenbacher down the field to help his safety. Mental errors. And Mitchell Evans in coverage of former receiver. Indiana starts two former receivers from a year ago in the defensive backfield. Big reason why they're down 14 nothing. Great protection. Look at this offensive line. Pryor reading, reading, throwing the ball across the field. This is this is this is the way we planned it all day in week uh, practice, boys. In the first. Back to Columbus, Ohio State, rolling early, 14 nothing over Indiana. And a beautiful day here in Columbus. Temperature expected to reach about 80 degrees. Tandon Doss for Indiana on the return. And Doss gets away from one man and then finally drilled at the 20-yard line as we say hello to Reese Davis in the studio. Hello, gentlemen. Taco Bell studio update. The most played rivalry in college football. Many Soto and Wisconsin for Paul Bunyan's axe and Scott Colzine at the freshman Jared Abraderas for a touchdown. John Clay's already close to 50 yards. Bucky's on top, 7-0. Penn State and Illinois is on ESPN2 right now. The Nittany Lion offense has been struggling. Put a field goal on the board right now. Joe Buss team up by three. 
Badgers. East Ohio State will be in Madison next week to play Wisconsin. The Badgers coming off a loss at Michigan State. Spartans at Michigan later today on ABC. Chapel finds his tight end Deadman knocked down at the 26 yard line by Jermail Hines. Our Saturday menu brought to you by Applebee's. There's the Michigan Michigan State game. Of course, a lot of people be talking about Alabama and South Carolina, whether the Tide will get upset after they rolled against Florida last week. See how Denard Robinson does against a former old defense. Seven Ray Jones. And, seven O's and the Canes getting at it again. A meaningful game. Yep, Jimbo Fisher's birthday, and it's uh, the first time since the mid-70s that Bobby Bowden wasn't on the sideline, obviously, for the Florida State-Miami game. Second down and four, and Chapel finds Belcher, who's knocked down about a yard short of the first down marker by Chimdi Chekwa, senior defensive back, starting for the 33rd straight game. You know, the Hoosier offense relies on big plays after their receivers catch the ball, yards after catch. The problem is when you have good tacklers in the secondary, like Hines and Chekwa, they're eliminating those yards. So right now, athlete versus athlete, the Buckeye defenders are beating the Hoosier receivers and their skill players. And a flag down. There was movement by Indiana. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Andrew McDonald, the left tackle, the guilty man. And that's the problem of playing on the road. You're not playing at home. Your crowd is not under control. This is it's hard to hear. You're the visiting team. The thing that the Bill Lynch's team needs to do, their offense, make some first downs, get some momentum going for their side. Indiana in this formation likes to work the single receiver side. They have press coverage up there with Chekwa. See the press? They're going to take that away. And Chapel has to get rid of it, and the throw's on the money. A flag down, the pass caught by Belcher. They might get Chekwa for interference. Good job by Chapel backing up, about to take a shot, and completed the pass. Well, this is what film study will show you. Again, Chekwa lets him inside. If you're going to take him away, then you have to take away the inside anytime. That's what we pointed out. That's where Indiana likes to work on the backside of the trips formation or the quads formation. Belcher bobbled the ball. Looked like he caught it, though, after the juggle. But again, let's see what the flag is. The check will for holding. The ruling on the play is that the pass was incomplete. There was holding by the defense, number 19. That's a 10-yard penalty with an automatic first down. So they get Orion Johnson, the safety, away from the play, and they ruled that Belcher didn't catch the pass. Regardless, it's a first down for Indiana, something they needed desperately. You hear you hear Chris out there talking about trips and quads. That's simply three receivers or four receivers grouped to one side or the other. And he knows that most of the offensive thinking is put them over there, throw away from the quads, the four and the three receivers. You always have single coverage on the opposite side, and that's where they went with it. Here's Doss on the inside handoff. Ohio State not fooled. Doss loses yardage. They like to give it Doss a lot of ways, and that time it didn't work. Well, just disregard. Anytime he runs that short motion, if you have a blitz on or any type of zone, whatever defense you have, just disregard it, especially if you're a safety or a linebacker, and honor that. And you saw right there, Brian Rowe came up and made a play. He might have been in a blitz, but he just said, no, I know this play is coming. Indiana has to have a counter off of that speed sweep to Tandon Doss. Roll a senior linebacker from Florida, the second leading tackler for Ohio State. Nathan Williams in on the play there as well. We've called his name a couple times already. Chapel slings it downfield. It's incomplete. Orion Johnson on the coverage of Belcher and the pass out of bounds. It's just good coverage. Nice throw, nice catch. Well, his one foot was in bounds. Maybe he didn't have possession. Yeah, no, ball it, was no, no, no possession. This is a good defense that the Hoosiers are going up against. Ohio State's only allowed six touchdowns the first five weeks on defense. And another penalty flag. M movement again by Indiana here. Ball start. 
Offense, number 62, five yard penalty, remains third down. Tonight ESPN delivers an SEC showdown. It's number 12 LSU taking on Florida as the Gators look to rebound from the loss to Bama last week. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern. We have a few new starters in that offensive line. A lot of movement up front by the Ohio State defensive line. Sometimes gets them a little jumpy. Jordan Marquette, the right guard, moved last time. Chapel going for Doss way over his head. Indiana will punt the ball. Nathan Williams hit Chapel that time. It's just hard to, to go against a top flight defense on the road when you're helping them by pushing yourself back from third and nine to third and 15. You know, Chapel did the right thing. He threw it away, but you know, it's hard Bob, enough. You, you were the master play caller at third and 15. <laughs> what would you call it? Draw all screen? That's when I walked to the <laughs> sideline and I said to Coach Shula, I said, you always wanted to call a play. Here's your chance. <laughs> Hager ups punt. Awkward trajectory there. Out of bounds. Ohio State will have decent field position, leading 14 0 Columbus weekend. Here in Columbus, 14 0 Buckeyes. Ohio State defense looking good again against an Indiana team that put up 35 points against Michigan. Granted, the Wolverines defense struggling in other games as well. We'll see how they do against Kirk Cousins of Michigan State later today on ABC. 14-0, Ohio State on top. And Terrell Pryor with a touchdown pass, 71 yards through the air. He had 75 all of last week, and here they don't get the playoff to lay a game. Ohio State calls their first timeout. Now they get the uh, timeout call in before the penalty flag for delay. Back in a moment, 14-0, Buckeyes lead. Ohio State's touchdown drives, both under two minutes. Minute 57 on the first, 56 seconds on its last drive. That was after an Indiana interception. Movement by Ohio State. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So you come out of a timeout, you almost have delay. Then you come out of another timeout, you have movement. <laughs> that drives the head coach wild, I'm going to tell you. Like I say, it's tough enough to pick up yardage. Well, it hasn't been that tough for Ohio State offensively so far. Over 100 yards total offense. Pryor's got a wide open man again. Torian Washington in the middle of the field to midfield as we check in with Reese. All right, Dave, Virginia Tech taking on Central Michigan, stepping out of conference play. Tyrod Taylor. Taylor went over 100 yards rushing last week against North Carolina State. He's going to rip off 72 here against the Chips. Central Michigan's lost a couple of close games. They're hanging close right now, tied at 7. NC State, after losing to the Hokies last week, they blocked a punt for a touchdown up on BC by 10. Prior to throw here, Reese finds Zach Bourne out of the backfield. Hurdles a defender, Adrian Burks. The Ohio State coaches love Zach Bourne, the sophomore fullback. He looked pretty good out there in space. Brother of Justin Bourne, the offensive guard, Zach Bourne, voted offensive lineman of the week from fullback position. That tells you the questionable play by the offensive line, but showing a little athleticism there for 250 pounds. Nice. Fullbacks don't get a lot of love, but if you can block, and that's what they, this kid does, and catch, you, you will be a very popular guy. The last fullback we saw do that was Brian Leonard of Rutgers. The Leonard leap. That was a 15-yard gain. Seven of the 12 Ohio State plays have been 10 or more yards. And prior to pass, going middle of the field to Sansenbacher, and the ball came out. He couldn't hang on. Replogal on the coverage. Take a look at our Bud Light playbook, the touchdown by Ohio State on its last possession. Well, first of all, you have two Indiana defenders jumping the underneath route, which leaves the middle of the field wide open. Now, in order for that to work as an offense, you have to have vision as a quarterback. You've got to see the mistake on a defense. Then it's easy, if you're experienced and understand defenses, to exploit it with a good throw and a good route. All three phases. Offensive line gave him protection. Action. Quarterback got the ball out and the receiver got open. I got news for you that Hoosier secondary hasn't fixed that problem yet. And another penalty marker down. 
the previous pass play before the last pass play, same exact thing. You had two guys covering a short route, and just Terrell's All back there. Offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, remains second down. See, and I can't believe they keep making the same mistakes, so I'm just going to hit the 12 or 14-yard skinny poster dig all day. Well, what Indiana's defense is doing, and what most defenses do against Terrell Pryor, is play zone. Because they don't want all their guys running around in case he crosses the line of scrimmage on a scramble. So they play a lot of zone. They're getting open. He's only scrambled once, and that was when he was forced out of the pocket. And he hits Jordan Hall out of the backfield. The Buckeye coaches told us they wanted to get the ball in Hall's hands more. We have not seen a design run for Pryor yet. And as mentioned, the only time we saw him come out of the pocket was when he was forced out. But again, Jim Trestle says he's 100%. He's good to go. And that the pop that Pryor heard last week against Illinois was his knee brace that he wears from having arthroscopic surgery in the offseason. I think just he got a little scared, mentally scared. Anytime you have knee surgery, you hear a pop, you panic right away. He just had to make sure that he was okay. But he looks fine to me. Pryor on third down and long, has time to throw again. That pass high. And intended for Atari and Washington, it's fourth down. Here's the injury against Illinois. It was a non-contact injury. So he was out for a few series and then came back. He just kind of stumbles here. And that's when he heard the pop of the uh, strap on the brace. And he did pull his, you know, he pulled his thigh a little bit. But uh, obviously it's nothing that serious. But I don't think you're going to see him running much today. Meanwhile, Ohio State going to attempt a long field goal. Drew Basil, who is their kickoff man and their long field goal kicker, will try a 53-yard field goal. You've got to make sure you get the ball high enough. A lot of times, long field goals are driven low. Yep. It's blocked. Right on cue there, Chris. And Indiana will take over with good field position. Larry Black blocked it for Indiana. Let's go to Reese Davis now in the studio. All right, Dave, we'll get you up to speed on this Texas Tech-Baylor game. Crazy play. The Riverboat Gambler, Tommy Tuberville, went for the onside kick, but the players weren't coached up well enough. You can't just let Terrence Gannaway pick it up and run it in. Hey, if it doesn't go 10, you can pick it up if you want to at your own risk, and the Bears up by seven. Wow. <laughs> When's the last time you guys saw that? Oh, I was on those. Reese is up to date on those special teams rules. <laughs> Again, you saw the low kick, which caused the block. You don't need that much penetration. Good momentum changer for Indiana. They can make something happen. Inside handoff, Burgess. No running room. That's a gain of maybe two or three. Nick Turner, actually, the ball carrier brought down by Nathan Williams. Normally, you want to get about three yards of penetration. You saw how low that ball was kicked, just above the helmet level of his offensive lineman. And frankly, it has no chance if you guys get your hands up in the air, just like the Hoosier defenders did. One chink in the armor for Ohio State is that they've had a field goal blocked earlier in the season that was returned for a touchdown. So their special teams have not been that stellar this year. No gain on the previous play by Turner. Now Burgess is back out there. Indiana minus one rushing yard. Their starter Darius Willis out with a groin injury. Here's Doss on the end around. They've run that play twice. And it hasn't worked yet. Nathan Williams made the play again. This is a guy you like. Well, I think watching all the Ohio State games, watching him on film, I think he's their best defender. Tyler Moeller was very productive. Now, they have a lot of great players, don't get me wrong, but as far as production-wise, Nathan Williams has a lot of versatility. He can line up and be a defensive end. They move him around. He can be a linebacker in the middle. He can be a linebacker from the outside and plays the run and is a decent zone pass dropper. Another third and long for Indiana. There he is right there. Chapel's pass drop. Deweese Wilson, the intended receiver, he wasn't going to get the first down anyway. And it's fourth down. Coverage by the linebacker, Brian Roll. Ohio State hasn't had a lot of sacks defensively this year, but what they do do is disrupt, and especially against a guy like Chapel, whose strength is getting rid of the football quickly. You can disrupt the throw and be just as effective without the yardage loss as a sack by disrupting throws and timing of routes, and that's what they do a good job of. Hager up, takes the low snap. Gets off a decent kick, fielded by Hall at the 20. And Hall stood up at the 25 and driven back. 
Now we got some pretty good quarterbacks in college football again this year. Denard Robinson on his way perhaps to 2,000 yards rushing and passing. We saw Ryan Mallett a few weeks back. Andrew Luck might be the number one pick in the draft next year over Jake Locker because of the way Luck has played. Kellen Moore just gets it done, huh? For Boise State. And of course here in Columbus, Terrell Pryor, who already has thrown for over 100 yards and a touchdown in this game. Pryor Jr., the Rose Bowl MVP, threw for a career-high 266 yards in the win over Oregon in that bowl game. They run Hall left side here, and he's out to the 26 for a gain of about three. Tackle made by Terrence Thomas on the final play of the first quarter. You see Nebraska on Thursday night, and that kid Taylor Martinez? Yes, he's good. Talk, talk about quarterbacks that can run. Quarterback for Indiana struggling, Ben Chappell. We're up fire the Buckeyes, a 14-zip after one. Ah, the serenity of a Saturday on the campus of Ohio State, anywhere other than Ohio Stadium. It's a great day to get a lot of work done because everybody that isn't studying is here at the ball game. Again, over 100,000 for Ohio State and Indiana, and a good start for the Buckeyes, leading by two scores after one. Terrell Pryor has a touchdown pass and tried to dump it off here. It got tipped at the line, and then Pryor caught it. And he's brought down at the 25, ended up losing a yard. Jeff Thomas on the tackle. You know, anytime that happens, the quarterback just wants to should knock it down, especially if you're got an injury of some kind knock it to the ground but the competitiveness of all of the players that are out there says let me catch it and I going to get a first down I can do something with it just knock it to the ground I'm going to disagree with you if yeah. you're a slug knock it to the ground if you're Terrell Pryor catch it make something happen <laughs> if you're Terrell Pryor and you have a knee uh, a thigh injury I knock it down I, I think he's okay that's just my sh <laughs> Adam Replogle got a hand on it for Indiana so it's third and eight after the loss of one and Pryor with all day to throw. And the catch made, and it's a Buckeye first down. Corey Brown, true freshman, was open over the middle, and he takes it out to the 40-yard line. That's his third catch of the year. You know, I never thought I would hear Coach Trestle say this, but they're a throwing football team first. And, you know, he won all those championships at the FCS level at Youngstown State, early years at Ohio State, run the ball, run the ball. But I'll tell you what, they are a throwing football team, and that young man is getting better and better and better. Now, he still needs to see the field a little bit better, but as the more reps he gets, the better he gets, and the better he sees the field and getting all players involved that are eligible to catch the football. Play action, and Pryor looking deep and going deep for Brandon Sane. Sane with a catch. It's on. 20 nothing Buckeye. Well, the coaches told us they were going to line Sane up with wide receiver. They did on that play, and it's a 60-yard touchdown. Puts it through 21 to nothing. Brandon Sane's seventh career receiving touchdown. The second touchdown pass of the game for Terrell Pryor. He now has 14 on the year. Sorry, I'm late, fellas. Oh, cool. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that? Huh? How come my dad wasn't like that? Well, this is just us, then. Yeah, it's just something we do. Well, yeah, who who else is in the so-called us? Man, I don't know. There's a lot of us. <laughs> Ask your friends what it's like to be part of a group that's 40 million strong. State Farm insures more drivers than Geico and Progressive combined. It's no surprise with so many ways to save and discounts of up to 40%. So call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. USA Prime Credit. My name, Peggy. You got problem? Peggy? Third time I've called. It's time I speak with the supervisor. Supervisor. He's genius. I transfer. 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 
Transfer. Transfer. Transfer. Hello, my name is Peggy. Come on! Hello. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover and get the help you need the first time you call. It pays to Discover. Ask me. Even if you think your mattress is just fine. Ask me what it's like to get your best night's sleep every night. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? It's not a Sealy or a Simmons or a Serta. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Ask me about staying asleep. These are actual Tempur-Pedic owners. Ask someone you know. Check out Twitter. Try your friends on Facebook. You'll hear it all, unedited. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Ask me if it's a good value. Just ask me. There are over 4 million Tempur-Pedic owners, and they're more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me why I feel better every morning. Ask me why someone who's never had an ache or a pain is in love with this bed. Start asking real owners. Ask me how we took the first step. Take the first step. Call today for your free information kit with DVD. 1-800-710-8328 or visit Tempur-Pedic.com. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Terrell Pryor has completed 11 of 15 passes for 183 yards. The latest, a 60-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Sane. Eight different receivers have caught passes for Ohio State, including Pryor. Caught one on a redirection by an Indiana defensive lineman. Nick Turner on the return for Indiana. Waiting for blockers to set up a running lane. It's not there. Taken down short of the 20, and flags come in. Let's check in with Reese. All right, we'll send it to Reese after we get the penalty marker here. Three flags down. Personal foul, number 15 of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. That's uh, James Jackson, who was the guilty man there for Ohio State. Here's saying he's lined up in the backfield. He's just going to run a wheel route down the sideline. And the thing that allows this play to happen is the great protection that Pryor gets. Look at him as the pocket. He's bouncing, he's bouncing, he's bouncing. This play took a long time to develop. And for Sane to get open, and he wasn't open that much. Just a good throw by the quarterback. You, know, you better have a safety deep against this team because they have many weapons that can beat you deep on the offensive side. A little rollout here for Chapel. And forced to throw it away. Good coverage by Hines downfield on Tandon Boss. How about Brandon Sane, too, guys? He was the first guy down the field on the kickoff after he had that 60 yard touchdown kick. He's a leader now. I mean, that's something that he's working on in, in his growth, not only as a as a player as far as physical production goes, but his mental production. And part of the mental production and growth is to be that guy that, hey, it's not about me, number two, Terrell Pryor. It's about us, our team, our guys. And he's learning and getting better than that. But the more success his team has on the offensive side of the ball. Burgess cannot get outside. Cameron Hayward and Holman. In on the stop, Devon Torrance, who had a pick earlier, also made the tackle. ESPN 3D is here. He'll be in Madison next week for the Ohio State-Wisconsin game. Josh Hoffman, the producer, Michael Ireland, the director. There's Mike. And uh, Dave Lamont, Tim Brown, Ray Bentley on the call. It looks awesome. And 3D <laughs> college football looks terrific. And if you haven't had a chance to see it, you got to check it out. It's good stuff. Had the glasses on. It was. It's amazing. Looks like robots are taking over the world, man. Meanwhile, third down and 10 for IU. Chapel has to throw off his back foot again, and the pass broken up. Torrance on the coverage of Belcher. It's fourth down. Just the timing is off for the Hoosier offense, and why is the pressure? You're going to see Torrance playing that press coverage again. They're working the backside of trips or the three receiver side. And you have Torrance. Maybe they get in there a tad early. Maybe. Yeah. I think because the throw was late. Because he turned around for looking for the ball and Torrance hit him because the ball was late. But you have the skill players, the edge players for Indiana, not able to create se separation in those one on one matchups. All back to receive the punt. 
Hall gets a running lane and then gets creamed at the 39 yard line. Big hit by Banks, but Ohio State leading 21 nothing. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by G. Over 5,000 animals at the Columbus Zoo here in Columbus, Ohio. Meanwhile, Ohio State with three touchdowns, and the Buckeyes have not even been in the red zone yet. All big play so far. Buckeyes take over on their 40-yard line, and they'll run Dan Heron. Aaron trying to cut back. It stood up at the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty marker down. And one of the problems Ohio State has had offensively, there's no consistency in running the football with the running backs. And that's because this offensive line, in my opinion, allows way too much penetration. They do not move the ball or move the defenders past the line of scrimmage. Illegal block. Crack back by number 12 offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. That's on Sansenbacher. Here's Reese Davis. All right, you guys want to keep our finger on the pulse. On ESPN2, you're getting a good look at Rob Bolden, who's thrown a touchdown pass to Derek Moy for Penn State to bring them within four. That was after Bolden threw a pick six to Nate Fussy of Illinois. And on ESPNU, Darren Evans has scored a touchdown. Hokies added a field goal. And now they're up by 10 on the Chippewas of Central Michigan. All right, race here. It's 21 zip. Terrell Pryor has run the ball just once. That was when he was forced out of the pocket. He's throwing it well. Don't need to run it. Good toss there to Devere Posey to the 35 yard line. Gain of 10. Adrian Burks on the coverage. It'll be second and 15. Pryor so far 12 of 16, 193 yards passing. He's averaging 200 yards passing per game this year. He's going to be there before halftime. Sane and Heron both in the backfield now. And Pryor to throw again. Trying to create space. Gets wrapped up and sacked. Kevin Bush got the sack. Beckham was there as well for Indiana. Something Ohio State's trying to add to their passing game is Terrell Pryor in the play action. From him coming from under center, the problem is he's a better thrower and he gets a better read of the defenses when he's lined up in shotgun. The other thing is you have Boom Aaron trying to pick up and pass protect, and you have Brandon Sane at fullback. Well, Indiana knows, and I know, that they're using Brandon Sane in there not as a blocker, but as an extra route runner, basically a third receiver in the backfield. And Kevin Bush, a great story, spent three years in the U.S. Armed Forces, served in Korea and Iraq, and walked on to play football at Indiana. Pryor in trouble again, and down he goes again, sacked at the 21-yard line. Darius Johnson made the play, third sack for Indiana. Adam yeah. Replogel, Tyler's brother, also there for the Hoosiers. Yeah, the Plogel brothers. Indiana came in with only four sacks on the season. There's, a, there's two Replogel brothers already at, at, at Indiana, and one's on the way. Yeah. Yeah, their younger brother, Mike, is a linebacker recruit for next year. Buchanan with a good kick. Doss inside his 25-yard line. Nowhere to run. Dropped at the 21. 21-0. Ohio State on top. Twenty-one nothing, Ohio State on top as we welcome you back to beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Temperature supposed to reach 80 degrees here. Indiana minus one yard the last nine plays. Their last play that went for positive yardage ten plays ago. And this is an offense that had been rolling through the first four games. Just got outscored by Michigan last week. Chapel with a long throw. Belcher caught it and only got about three. Tackled by Chekwa. Here's Reese Davis. 
Florida and Tennessee, Dave. A.J. Green back in the lineup. I want you to watch this spectacular catch. This is why he's going to play on Sundays, because he gets just drilled by Jansen Jackson. Hangs on to it for 33 yards. Dogs paid it off with a touchdown. Tennessee's just answered. It's 17-7 Georgia. What a play by Green. And boy, Georgia needs that one. Well, both teams need them, but especially Georgia. Chapel. His pass tipped, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Brian Roll. Ross Holman tipped it. Well, when you have great effort and pursuit to the football, good things can happen. First of all, it's great awareness by Ross Holman. Getting in the throwing lane and elevating. Setting the old volleyball set drill. Nice vertical for Ross Holman. You have Brian Roll chasing the ball no matter what it looks like. And effort always pays off. And here you see Brian Roll chasing the ball coming up and showing good hands and awareness, hand-eye coordination to bring in the turnover. Those two inside linebackers aren't the biggest guys either. Roll and Holman. But they come up with the pick. Every play reviewed in college football, and it looks like they're going to review this particular play a little further. Timeout called by Indiana. We'll Indiana see. Indiana calls their first timeout. Now, to challenge a play, you have to call timeout. Don't know if that's why Lynch called the timeout here or not. Again, initially, it looked like Roll did intercept the pass. Holman with a tip. Pretty athletic play by a guy wearing number 36, Chris Spielman. How are those flat rate boxes working out? Indiana has challenged the ruling on the field. It has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which was interception. You get one challenge in college football, and if you lose it, you lose it. If you win it, then you get to keep the challenge and use it one more time throughout the game. Holman with the tip, roll with the diving play it looked like it actually hit the foot of Holman that might have kept it from hitting the ground because it looked like roll made a clean catch and Bob had a good question was where was he throwing it because it looked like it would have been dealers choice back there who gets <laughs> the interception <laughs> I didn't see any receivers back there after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed there was an interception Indiana is chant is charged a timeout their first Hit the Indiana right foot. no longer has an ability to challenge. Again, every play still is reviewed, but that did hit the foot of Holman, probably kept it from hitting the ground. Exactly. It would have hit the ground without the foot. Nice job of Brian Roll of keeping that ball up. A lot of times your momentum as you're reaching for the ball, your body weight going forward, that ball could touch the ground. He was very aware of to keep those hands up and high and showing that he made the catch, trying to sell it a little bit. Holman's, Holman's been involved throughout his career in in interceptions and forced fumble he's got 12 forced fumbles or interceptions in his career Dan Heron off the left edge gets to the 25 yard line got about six yards three college football games available regionally on ABC or ESPN at 3.30 Eastern time. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Some of you will see Arkansas, Texas A&M, Clemson, North Carolina, or the big one at the big house that Art Robinson in Michigan against Michigan State, a pair of undefeated teams. And Robinson leads the nation in rushing. He's second in total yards. On pace for 2,000, both rushing and passing. Don't know if it will happen, but right now he's the leader in the house for the Heisman Trophy as Heron gets the first down to the 17, picked up eight yards. And pair right now, Daniel Heron and Jim Tressel talks about this, is you want to give a guy some carry so he can get into a rhythm. And this is good. Boom Heron is a guy that gets better. The more he gets hit, the better he gets. And the offensive lineman, once he runs physical, they feed off of his physicality as far as running the football. Heron again. This time there's no hole. Leon Beckham comes firing in there. A loss of one on the play. Ohio State in the red zone for the first time. They came in second in the country in red zone appearances with 31. I think you're right, Chris. I think I think Tress feels very confident about the outcome of this ball game. 
Now he just wants to put put his guys in his troops and let's run the football. I formation is a is a solid running formation and he's been in the I formation two or three times on this drive already. And it seems in the ball game as well that he split out as a wide receiver blocking on this play. Heron trying to bounce it to the outside. Can't. No gain on the play. Matt Ernest made the stop for Indiana. Because their offenses look good, but it's looked good with the passing game first and then add in the running game. But, you know, you're, you're right. There's something up front that's just not clicking. These guys know who to block. It's just to see if they don't, they don't, they don't fire off the ball. They don't. They don't get after it. They're not physical. So what does that front. mean for, for Ohio State and its hopes of winning a national title? Well, I think they have to get better and more consistent at running the football with their running backs as opposed to just counting on Terrell Pryor to get 100 yards scrambling every week. Pryor has minus 19 rushing yards on three carries, but again, those were sacks, not design carries. As Pryor goes end zone, and it's pulled in for the touchdown by Devere Posey. Back shoulder fade went executed unstoppable. Three years ago, Terrell Pryor couldn't have made this ball. This ball is out of his hand right now. He threw that ball real early. Posey saw it. That, that's just that's that's good stuff right there. Great point, Bob, about the fact that we, we didn't see that from Pryor no, a couple no, of years back. No. But that was beautiful. Third touchdown pass already. Posey with his third touchdown catch of the year. It's 28 nothing. Ohio State. Let's check in with Reese Davis. The Sports Center right now, presented by Discover. Mark D'Antonio expected to be in the big house from Michigan State. Takes on Michigan. Battle of Unbeatens. You can see it on ABC at 3:30 Eastern or on ESPN, depending on where you live. We'll break down the map for you a little later on. On ESPN2, Illinois leading Penn State, 17, now 13. Nittany Lions, seconds ago, kicked a field goal. This was an 80-yard touchdown pass from Rob Bolden to Derek Moy. 17-13, good tight game going in the Big Ten on ESPN2. And here, Reese, it is 28-0. Terrell Pryor has thrown three touchdown passes over 200 yards already. And they're working on the left hand there of Adrian Burks, who is on the coverage on Posey on the touchdown. They already got injuries for Indiana on the offensive line and also in the secondary. Their best DB, Richard Council, out with a knee injury this week. Tandon Doss has it for Indiana on the kick return. And Doss crosses the 25, and that's it. Well, Jim Trestle told us yesterday Terrell Pryor wants to be a passer. We haven't seen him run at all when it's been uh, there's been no design run plays. He's just dropping back and throwing it around the park. Well, I think with Terrell Pryor, he understands when he needs to run, he will run. Right now, against his team, he feels like he doesn't have to run. The other thing, real quick, the improvement of Terrell Pryor, he's in the second year with Posey and Sainzenbacher. That makes a big difference in the timing of the routes and those guys working together. Very impressed with what he's done in the pocket. Indiana going back to the ground. Big hole down the middle of the field and out across the 40-yard line is Antonio Banks. Even though Ohio State may be struggling on the offensive line, is Terrell Pryor enough to maybe get them over the top when they uh, go up against an Iowa or a Wisconsin next week? I, I think against teams like Indiana, I think it's plenty enough. But when they start playing the top teams in the Big Ten and they top, if they have any national championship aspirations, they play teams like Alabama and Oregon and those types of teams. They're going to need a running game from their from their running backs. Banks taken down for a loss there of about two. We mentioned the game at Wisconsin. That's a night game in Madison on ESPN. Home games left with Purdue, Penn State, and Michigan. Have to go to Iowa. Remember that game here last year was for the Big Ten title won by Ohio State. Ricky Stanz, he didn't play in that game. He was out with injury. They do not play Michigan State. And boy, if uh, Ohio State were to lose next week in Madison, you might have a whole lot of teams with one loss in the middle of November in the Big Ten. Things could get interesting. Chapel's pass caught by Deadman, the tight end. 
at the 47-yard line, a gain of seven. Take a look now at our Aflac trivia question. Which former starting quarterbacks from Indiana and Ohio State played in Super Bowls and won? We also say that this question is a little <laughs> deceiving. Okay, just, as you try to think about the answer. What do you mean? Oh, this well, week. Joe Sullivan, our statistician who comes up with these, is trying to fool us each week because he wants to make us look bad. Yeah. Well, one of them was my roommate when I was a player here at Ohio State, so I got one of them at least. Well, who is it? Tom Tupa. That's why we said it was deceiving as uh, Chapel gets leveled, and he completes it to true freshman Kofi Hughes right at the first down marker. Seems like Chapel throws it better when he gets hit. It's a first down for the Hoosiers. All right, let's go ahead and answer the Aflac trivia question. Tom Tuba was a punter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they won Super Bowl. He also played quarterback in the NFL for the Cardinals. Antoine Randall played wide receiver for the Steelers when they beat Seattle. Oh, so that's a tricky a question. Mike Tomczak, though, he, he played quarterback in the NFL. Mike, Mike played a lot of years for a lot of teams in the NFL. Now an assistant coach over at Ohio Dominican University. He was a Jim McMahon's backup in 86 when the uh, Bears beat Craig James and Trevor Maddich's New England Patriots as uh, Nick Turner. It's nothing. Cameron Hayward there for Ohio State. Look at these guys. See no evil? <laughs> Hear no evil? Speak no evil. <laughs> Signaling the plays in for the Hoosiers. Which guy are you looking at if you're Chapel? Well, he knows the one to look at. But the rest of us don't. Officially a loss of one on the last play. Chapel finds Hughes again, and Holman comes in there, sticks his face in there, knocks him down, along with Hayward at the 45-yard line. Yeah, that's why Cameron Hayward is, is going to be a number one draft choice for his ability to always play. See McDonald down there shaking up, but you talk about Cameron Hayward. Obviously, he can play inside, he can play outside, but when you see him make plays down the field or a wide receiver screen, and he's hustling from across the field to make a play, you know that he's a productive player on the defensive line. Cameron Hayward, a senior from Georgia, making his presence felt today here in Columbus. Look at him just <laughs> bowl over the left guard, Aaron Price. Getting pressure there on Chapel. That's the thing, he has speed. I mean, he can play outside, he can beat you with speed. He has a great power rush, which we just saw. That's just a bull rush. And also the ability to play the run. If you watch him when he plays the run, he uses his hands very well. He creates separation between himself and the offensive lineman and disengages and makes plays. But when you can run and you can play inside and outside, you're a valuable asset to any football team at any level. Chris, you played in a 3-4 defense. Is he a 3-4 end based on his size, 6'5", 290? A lot of NFL teams are taking guys that were primarily outside guys in college and moving them to that 3-4 end. Yeah, he's a five technique, or he can play a, a three technique in a 3-4. If you play a under front, that just means moving one of your defensive ends in the NFL down over the guard. Or in a 4-3, he can play a three technique. The only position I think he whoa, would whoa, struggle whoa, whoa. on the offensive line, I'll tell you in a second. The only, <laughs> the, only, the only thing you can do is because uh, nose guard is a di difficult position for him to play. Andrew McDonald, the left tackle, hurt another injury on the offensive line. They lost their normal right tackle, James Brewer, in practice this week to an ankle injury. He's going down to cut Nathan Williams on a three-step drop. The good news is he's up. Josh Hager, who did play a little bit when Indiana went to an unbalanced line last week against Michigan is the backup left tackle. He starts throwing all these three techniques, <laughs> five techniques. I mean, I mean well, okay, it's, it's very simple. I mean, we, I, I know, but. Yeah, I know, but, you know. But I'll tell the folks, a three okay. technique is when a defensive tackle lines up on the outside shoulder of a guard. A five technique is when a defensive tackle lines up on the outside shoulder of a tackle. So did you learn this in, Did you learn this in Jim Tressel's uh, coaching class well, at Ohio State? I learned this out of the crib, my friend. My dad was a high school football <laughs> coach. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> okay, here for example, here's an offensive guard. That's a three technique right there. Cameron Hayward's in a three technique because he's on the outside shoulder. If he was lined up here, or like Nathan Williams, that would be a five technique. It's very simple. Outside shoulder determines the number of the technique. 
And you're saying the one position he can't play is the one technique, right? Over just the nose? Head up over the nose. Okay. I'm not saying he can't. I just think that would be his biggest challenge. Chapel's pass Whoa. off the mark. He threw for 480 yards last week. He's been held to 53 today, and Indiana has to punt again. And Cameron Hayward in there to harass the throw. That's something that's been missing from the Indiana offense is their timing. And there's a the spin move. I mean, he can beat you with speed, quickness, power. He's got good genes, and he's a four-year starter. This is his 39th start for the Buckeyes. We talked about those genes. Uh, his late father, Ironhead Craig Hayward, who uh, passed away back in 2006 after a battle with bone cancer at the age of 39. Ironhead played 11 years in the NFL. As that is a good punt, bounces inside the 10 and out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Take a look at our week six storylines. Oregon moving past Boise State. Some think Oregon should move past Ohio State into the number two slot behind Alabama. And some traditional powers missing as Notre Dame, Penn State, Texas, and SC not in the AP poll for the first time in 50 years. And a battle of unbeatens on ABC at 3.30 or ESPN today, Michigan, Michigan State. You talk about Denard Robinson. I, I got news for you, that kid Kirk Cousins, he's a player up at Michigan State. I like him a lot. First down on the Ohio State seven, a run play. And Heron trying to bounce to the outside. Did well to get back to the original line of scrimmage as Indiana had good penetration. Bob and Dave, you see what I mean? They have no movement on the offensive line as far as pushing a defensive lineman back. And boom, Heron's forced to go side to side. How much of that is effort? How much of that is technique? Well, to me, I mean, you got a technique, you got to execute it. You line up, and it's five individual spots that work as one. You got to make a, a decision in your mind that I'm going to take my man and I'm going to move him down. And they're not doing it on a consistent basis. That's been a problem all year. Heron again, this time running left. And he gets knocked down after a gain of two yards by Tyler Replogle. We mentioned the brothers Adam and Tyler. And Bobby talked about his younger brother, Mike. They're the first brother tandem to start at Indiana since a guy we mentioned earlier, Antoine Randall. I'll remember Antoine had a brother, Curtis, who was a defensive back at and, Indiana. And there is a fourth Replogo. Uh, sophomore in high school. His three older brothers are going to be at Indiana. Something to keep your eye on. You Zach go. Bourne just limping off the field looks to be in some pain. Down on the Ohio State sidelines, he's an integral part of this offense. Been a while since Pryor threw a pass. Not rusty. Posey loose at the 30-yard line, brought out of bounds at the 32. Got about 20 yards. There's Bourne, went to the sideline on the last play. He's their fullback. He doesn't run the ball much, but he's a very good blocker and a receiver. That's Justin Bourne. His older brother came over from Michigan a couple of years ago. Fire rolling out. Throws back to the near side of the field where Reed Fragel, the tight end, takes it out to the 48 as we check him with Reese. All right, Dave, coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report, we'll look ahead to the Michigan State-Michigan game this afternoon. Mark D'Antonio expected to be in the big house. Several Big Ten games slugfest right now. Penn State's in a little bit of trouble at home. And Texas Tech and Baylor, they're running up and down the field right there. All kinds of scoring going on in the Cotton Bowl. We'll see in a bit. Well, Reese, this is not a slugfest. This is a one-sided affair as Torian Washington gets the Ohio State first down. The Buckeyes trying to put the Hoosiers away here going no huddle. Well, you know, if you're the play caller, Jim Tressel, there are things that you want to work on, okay? I used to call plays, and I, all right, I want to get the ball to this guy. I want to get the ball to that guy. Pryor getting away from pressure and finds Sansenbacher inside the 25. Another do we, first down. Do we need to work on our hurry up? All right, let's work on our hurry up in this ball game. You guys aren't going to be in the fourth quarter, so I'm going to get you some work now. All right, who hasn't caught the ball? I'm going to throw my tight yeah. end. Fragle, I got to get him the ball. The one thing that they haven't Indiana done. Bowser, second timeout. The one thing they haven't done, Chris, as we've been talking, is run with the running backs inside the running game. Well, it's not the Buckeyes' job to stop the Buckeyes. You know, if you want to pound it and get 35 on them before half, get 35. You can't let what Indiana does determine how you get your team ready to play. 
Saturday Night Football, a good one on ABC. Another chapter in the great Florida State-Miami rivalry. First time since the early uh, 2000s that both teams were ranked when playing each other. And also see USC Stanford Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern. And Ja'Cory Harris has struggled with interceptions. We saw him last week at Clemson throw two more. He now has eight on the year. Christian Ponder, quarterback for Florida State. See his numbers as well. Used to, they used, those two used to play in the Orange Bowl. Now they'll be playing up at Sun Life Stadium. Is that the name of it now? Because it changes every year, right? Yeah, it's, it won't be long before it's Greasy Stadium. <laughs> if I have anything to do with it. Uh, Sun Life Stadium, I think they're going to be around for a while. <laughs> Fryer on first and ten. Hawk along the sideline by Posey. Stepped out at the 19. The end of a handful. I mean, they have that all day. Again, they're like anybody else. They're like Indiana. They're going to work the back side of the trips or the three receiver side. You have to hear Posey up there. And Burks has to give him cushion because he know he can't hang with him on a deep route. Posey has seen wide open out of the backfield and a good hit by Ernest coming up from his corner spot to make the tackle on Sane. Minimal gain on second down. And Ohio State calls a timeout. One remaining for the Buckeyes. All week Jim Trestle has talked about getting Brandon Sane involved in the offense. And you see what they're doing. They line him up as fullback as a third wide receiver. Brandon Sane is very effective in the open field. It's just a matter of getting him in open field so he can use all of his skills, and they do that through the short passing game. Terrell Pryor with three touchdown passes today for Ohio State, 280 yards through the air in the first half. Remember, he had under 100 passing yards for the entire game at Illinois. Well, I think this is what Jim Tressel, the play caller, is bringing up the speed. He's gonna, he, he's, he needs he needs to work on his quarterback's touchdown passes. He's done that today. He needs to get Brandon Sane involved in the offense. He's done that today. Pryor has three running plays, but those are basically all sacks, not design runs. He's not even looking to run. He's not even looking. There's no interest in running, which is fine. Doesn't need to today. Now Indiana calls a timeout. Pryor is calls its final timeout. 11 straight completions. This is completions. a 30 timeout. You know, well, guys, I know that this is not Indiana's day so far, but you look at uh, the Hoosiers, and they were in a lot of close games on the road last year. The, yes, they finished 1-8, and 1-7 of the Big Ten, but Bill Lynch feels pretty good about where this program is headed. I think case in point is what they did last week. Even though they lost the game, they're in those games against teams like Michigan and like Iowa last year on the road. And, and Bill, like Bill told us earlier in the week, he's only he's only redshirted eight players, eight true freshmen in the last four years. So all of those guys that he didn't redshirt are going to be coming up through the system. And if they recruited good players, they're going to be around for five years. Well, you look at the remaining schedule, an excellent opportunity for them to win six games and get into a bowl game. They've had players there. Obviously, Tracy Porter, who basically won the Super Bowl for the Saints last year, starting corner. He was a second-round pick. They had a couple other guys last year drafted in the seventh round. Just don't have enough talent to hang with a team like Ohio State. Pryor gets away from a defender, and that ends the streak of 11 straight completions. And the dirt intended for Posey. Darius Johnson had pressure. It's fourth down. And Indiana has upgraded their facilities. Uh, you mentioned the first sellout last week in, in a long time. So football in Indiana is on the rise. Uh, they're having their problems here today, but uh, Bill Lynch is a good guy and he knows what he's doing. Devin Barclay will come on for a field goal. Drew Basil attempted a 53 yarder earlier in the game and missed. Bark plays long this year is 42. This is a 36 yard trot. It's 31 to nothing Buckeyes with 46 seconds remaining in the half. Hey, college football fans, it's time to put your college on the map. Build your own campus from scratch with ESPNU College Town. Find your school, pick your buildings, 
and recruit players. You can even challenge your friends across the country to see whose program is number one. Go to bethedean.com now to start playing. Chris, if you built one, there would not be any academic buildings. It'd be all well, football I, facilities. I think that's a little unfair, David. <laughs> I really do. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I would have the best weight room in the country. I know that. I'd have a stadium that's set 500,000, fill it every week. As long as we can use your <laughs> Lombardi Award trophy picture that we got to see at the Ohio State facility to put out front for all to see. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that's a good-looking kid. You didn't like the mustache? Just the fact that the neck is bigger <laughs> than the top of your head. That's, <laughs> that's a problem. Kickoff taken by Doss, and ball might have come out at the 24-yard line. No ruling yet. It's a fumble. They have not ruled Doss down. Indiana ball. Let's see the neck in action. Chris Spielman back in the day. Chris, a college football Hall of Famer. Second round pick of the Detroit Lions. I think it's the game he had 29 tackles, right, against Michigan? Not this one, but this was all that is they had the ball too much and we couldn't get off the field. Spielman using that neck there, uh, launching <laughs> into the uh, yes. Michigan player. And Chris spent 11 years in the NFL with the Lions, Buffalo Bills. One of the great Ohio State Buckeyes of all time. What did he say? See the ball, hit the ball, see ball, get ball. It's not Low that man, difficult. Low man wins. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Antonio Banks on the carries. Indiana's just trying to get out of the half here. Brought down after a game of two. Just going back to Indiana, I think when you, you know, kids see the type of offensive numbers you put up, they have talent on offense. They can get talent on offense. If they want to be competitive in the Big Ten, they've got to make a conscious effort, and I'm sure they are, of recruiting defensive athletes to be able to hang with the Denard Robinsons, Terrell Pryors, Posey's, Saints. Down the list you go. It's 31-0 Ohio State at halftime. Terrell Pryor had maybe his best half passing of the year, 280 yards and three scores. Now we send you to Reese, Mark, and Lou and the Bud Light Halftime Report. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Welcome back to Ohio Stadium in Columbus. The Buckeyes rolling over Indiana 31 nothing in Ohio State's Big Ten home opener. Terrell Pryor, who was held to 76 passing yards last week in a win at Illinois, threw for 280 yards in the first half, three touchdowns. Jim Trestle told us that Pryor is good to go after hurting his thigh last week, and Pryor looked 100% in that first half. Tandon Doss with 15 catches last week, just one in the first half, taken down on the return short of the 20. They passed by Greasy Chris Spielman. Guys, what was more impressive, Ohio State's offense and Terrell Pryor, or its defense holding Ben Chappell, who threw for 480 last week to less than 60 yards? Well, Terrell Pryor was pretty impressive. Uh, I have seen him three years ago, two years ago, and then this year. He's pretty impressive to me. Well, I think he's making good decisions. He's spreading the football around defensively. They're not allowing Illinois to have their skill work. In other words, every time one of their receivers catches the ball in space, they close it and make open field tackles. And that's how Indiana's offense operates, is letting those skill players do some work with yards after catch. Indiana gets a big play on first down as Trey Burgess at 13 yards. Darius Willis, their normal starter, is out with a groin injury. There's another offensive lineman, though, down for Indiana. It's their center. That's Will Matty. The left tackle, Andrew McDonald, got hurt in the first half. So you got to back up Josh Hager in at left tackle. The right tackle, James Brewer, was hurt in practice this week. His backup, Mark Damish, unfortunately, his father passed away. He'd been ill for a while, but Mark is not on the trip. So you got second teamers pretty much across the board for Bill Lynch's O line. Well, that's the problem. You, you had these guys get hurt in practice. And other guys stepped up, and that was your that was your depth. If you heard any get anybody else hurt in the ball game here, then you really got to go watch the center. Working on Dexter Larimore, number 72. And I don't know if his foot got caught in the turf or 
what the case may be, it didn't seem to be anything too terrible as far as like a guy falling on the side of his knee or rolling his ankle. So hopefully he'll be all right and back in there. So Pat McShane will come into the game. You've got Jordan Marquette at guard. Justin Pagan, who had been playing guard, is now playing tackle. You got more guys calling deep <laughs> dummy plays on the sideline for Indiana than you do healthy offensive linemen. Another run play, Burgess. Ross Holman firing in there makes the play after a minimal game. You know, it's just interesting if you, as you start to look to see the Big Ten unfold, what Indiana was able to, to do to Michigan's defense last week. And if you kind of take a comparison, now I knew it was a home game, but the lack of production, especially from the wide receivers and, and Ben Chapel against the Ohio State defense, it's just something to look forward to. Many people think that may be the downfall of Michigan as they progress through the Big Ten season is their defense. Michigan hosting Michigan State. About 90 minutes from now over on ABC or ESPN second down and nine blitz coming and the pass deflected by Holman who is coming in there and it's third down and long for Ross Holman a senior from Coldwater Ohio having a good day. Meanwhile Andrew McDonald for Indiana you see his helmet back on his return is probable suffered a neck injury in the first half looked a lot worse initially but his return is probable guarded left tackle today. So three of their starting five offensive linemen that started the game last week against Michigan are out. Chapel tried to hit Davis Walker out of the backfield. Torrance was right there for Ohio State. It's three and out for the Hoosiers. Again, you have to have some type of audible when you have this close to coverage. You see Devon Torrance right there in coverage, and you're asking an offensive tackle to get out there in space and block a corner against press coverage where the defensive back is lined up close to the receiver. You're asking the impossible. Just great recognition by the cornerback Torrance. First of all, to see what was developing and then get up there quickly and make the play. Actually, four and out. Indiana did get a first down on its initial play of the half. Paul on the return for the Buckeyes. Spins out of a tackle and then gets out of another one at the 30 yard line. Finally, spilled hard at the 35. So we'll get our first look at Terrell Pryor here in the third quarter after maybe his best half of the season and one of the best of his career. I'm interested in seeing how Jim Bowman and Jim Tressler are going to call the second half. One of the things that they feel they have to get better at is running the football with their running backs, and that is to tell the offensive lineman, now's your chance the second half. What do we have? You see Zach Bourne, number 44, shaken up in the first half back in there in the backfield the second half to start. Along with Brandon Sane, we saw Sane summit receiver, and he caught a 60-yard touchdown pass in that first half. And prior to throw, and Fragel, the tight end with his second catch of the day, out to the 40-yard line. Yeah, Brought down by Tyler Replogle. What Jim Tressel is not interested in doing is running up the score on Bill Lynch and the Indiana Hoosiers. What he is interested in doing is improving his offense. And like Chris just mentioned, one of the ways they can improve that is, is getting their running game going with the running backs. Another way is throwing to their backup tight end, Fragel, when he's in there. That's just the way. Here's an I formation run. This is a run formation. See if they get something done here. Aaron brought down at the point of attack. Short of the first down. We've seen Heron in there. He's gotten the bulk of the carries. We've seen some Jordan Hall, Carlos Hyde. We might see if Ohio State gets to the goal line, but they scored outside the red zone most of its points. And we haven't seen Terrell Pryor run at all today. He doesn't have an interest in running. I mean, there's times when he has pressure where obviously he could have stepped up into the pocket and made something happen. He decided not to run, which is fine. They don't need him today to run. Save him for the the games they need him. They're at Wisconsin next week, Saturday night on ESPN. Good throw there by Pryor, a first down. Posey into Indiana territory at the 47-yard line. Gain of 11. Shotgun looks downfield, comes back to the left. Single coverage. 
shake them, tackle. That's what these guys for Ohio State have done. They've been able to shake the wide receivers, that wide receiver uh, when you just throw it out there and make a miss. Indiana hasn't been able to do that. Bob, I know you like Terrell Pryor's footwork in the pocket. He moves those feet. Yes. Gets him chopping a little bit. Yep. Pryor with all day throwing deep for Posey. And it's incomplete. One of the first times we've seen a deep pass broken up by a defensive back, Greg Heben, who had barely played this year for Indiana yeah, on defense, makes the play. Ball's just a tad underthrown. Could have been out there another four or five yards where Posey wouldn't have to have come back and fought over the defensive back. Ohio State breaking the huddle with 12 on the play clock. Two to one pass to run ratio today for Ohio State. Sansenbacher, nice catch out on the flat. Makes a couple of nifty moves. Sansenbacher <laughs> to the 41-yard line. You don't want to come too far back inside. <laughs> you can get away from a couple of those guys, but when you run all the way back inside, all those big numbers are in there. First of all, it starts off with the catch, which is not an easy catch. Good job of adjusting his hips and moving his hips to get in position to catch the ball. <laughs> in that situation, go north and south. You got a better chance of getting some positive yards. All those heavy bodies are back inside. 304 yards through the air. He's averaging about three and a half yards a carry. That's about what they've been since week one in terms of their running backs. Breyer on third and three to throw gets hit as he delivers. It's caught by Sane for a first down. A lot of people, guys, questioned the receiving core for Ohio State going into this year. Remember, they're used to having guys like Santonio Holmes out there. Do, do they have enough to win a championship this year based on the guys they have for prior to throw to? When they get Stoneburner back, yes, now they have a new position for Brandon Sane. So there's four guys. Then you have Terrell Pryor becoming more and more comfortable in this offense as the year progresses. And he spreads the ball around, which makes it difficult to defend. A stone burner, their normal tight end out with an ankle injury. Here's Heron on first down and pushes his way towards the 26. Remember, Wisconsin's up next. We're going to have a lot to look at. See, the things that you have not seen here today from Ohio State offensively is Terrell Pryor rolling out, getting outside the pocket. You haven't seen the options. You haven't seen him, whether he's scrambling downfield. Stoneburner, the tight end, who is an excellent receiver, is not playing today. We'll play next week. I we'll talked to him before the game. He was said there's nothing worse, Chris, than sitting out. Aaron cut it back. Right into the arms of Thomas and Beckham. Nevertheless, we still have the big elephant like we saw earlier. The picture <laughs> from the Columbus Zoo in the room is that the lack of production on just running plays with running backs, it's not going to hurt them against Indiana. Now, they're going to be tested next week because athletes Wisconsin does have to go ahead and match up with Ohio State. Defensively, Wisconsin has some athletes. Well, you look at uh, the fact that Borland is out for Wisconsin. That certainly hurts. Yep. They still got players, though. Third and nine. And again, Pryor with all day to throw and an open man, Posey, in the middle of the field, takes it to the eight-yard line. A gain of 20, first and goal. See, that's what I like about Terrell, the new Terrell, the, the experience, the, uh, the confident Terrell, that he stays in the pocket. He waits. He's got time. His line will give him protection. He stays in there. He looks to his right. Now he comes back to his left. He moves his feet. He keeps the ball up near his shoulder, ready to release it. I like uh, what they're doing with uh, Terrell Pryor. And Donnell Jones, who made the tackle there on Posey, the injured man for Indiana. The offensive line did a good job at that time of picking up a zone blitz protection with five coming. Back to Columbus in a moment, 30. Welcome back to Ohio State. This telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. 
Dan's here at the Bud Light viewing party in Columbus, experiencing the latest technology firsthand. Bob, you went over to the 3D group at halftime. What'd you think? Well, I liked it. Things are coming right at me. <laughs> Bring back old flashbacks, Grease. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was dodging Hayward and all these other guys. The direct snap to Heron, and it's a touchdown for Ohio State. Heron second. He was lined up where Pryor normally is, and shotgun is the quarterback. 37 nothing. Just another formation to give future opponents something to prepare for and a way to get Daniel Heron involved in your offense. Direct snap. Zach Borden sealing the corner. Receivers blocking downfield. Pryor, Pryor was in the ball game, lined up out to the right side as a flanker. 10 play, 66 yard drive. 38 zip after Barclay's extra point. Two touchdowns on the ground for Dan Heron today. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by the new Ford Fiesta. It's a pretty big deal. Schmidt's Sausage House, which was established back in 1886 here in Columbus. They got great cream puffs, I hear, along with uh, their Autobahn Buffet. As Doss takes it out of the end zone for Indiana. Doss to the outside and stepped out of bounds, flags down. Oh boy, it's a little light on this one. I understand the rule. This isn't malicious. Got a personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number eight of the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. Aaron Gant, the guilty man for Ohio State. Yeah. Looks like he tried to hold up there. It is what it is. Yep. You got to play within the rules, understand the rules, and have the control to pull up. But still, it's doesn't tough. mean I like it. It's yeah. tough. No, it's, it's, it's the rules, though. It's the defensive guy has to be ready to pull off if the guy steps out of bounds. Sixth penalty by Ohio State. First down from the Indiana 41. Chapel hits Belcher over the middle for about seven yards as we check in with Reese. Dave on ESPN 2 right now. Nittany Lions in a world of trouble. Illinois on the move. Trick Ration. Jason Ford. Evan Wilson touched down. Evan Wilson the grab. 27 13. Illinois now lining up for a field goal to try to stretch the lead further. Wisconsin, I think they're going to get that actor up there. Meanwhile, Chapel completing it out of the flat to Terrence Turner for an Indiana first down. Illinois might be for real. The uh, Illini trailed Ohio State by only four going into the fourth quarter last week. They ended up losing that game, but you know, two and two on the year. Penn State's got a freshman quarterback, but not easy to win in Happy Valley. Meanwhile, Cameron Hayward shaking up for Ohio State. Yeah, it's 38 nothing. a lot of time left, but you know, at what point if you're Ohio State, do you start taking out your starters? That usually looks like a cramp right there when they pull the uh, toe back. I think defensively you can take out your starters, especially that guy, because you know he's a player. And if he's having any type of injury whatsoever, you might want to rest him. Offensively, I still think you can pull Terrell where you want to get uh, Joe Bowserman, maybe some work as we enter into the fourth quarter. But I would like to keep that offensive line intact just so they can keep working on things, especially if they go to some type of ground attack as we progress through the game. With a strong performance in Kansas, Jimmy Johnson has taken over the chase lead, but Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick are hot on his heels. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Pepsi Max 400 at California on ESPN tomorrow with 3 Eastern. This is the deepest in Ohio State territory that Indiana has been. The Buckeye 45, and they go backwards here. Turner pushed out. A loss of two. Chekwa made the play for Ohio State. 27 plays, meanwhile, for Ohio State in Indiana territory. 
The Hoosiers held a 90 yards total offense. Terrell Pryor has thrown for 335. That's a pretty good day. One of the best he's had in an Ohio State uniform. Here's Chapel and Thomas inside the 25 yard line. Dropped at the 22. Terrence Turner on the catch. He'd been quiet in the first half, but they're getting him going here in the third. Being We're a freshman. Yeah, working on a true freshman. Christian Bryant has taken Tyler Moeller's spot, who tore his peck last week in the game. You see Christian Bryant getting beat on the inside. The more reps he gets, the more experience he gets, he'll become better at that coverage. That's a weak spot right now, Chris, for the defense. They go back to the ground and Burgess, who gets out of the tackle, gets to the 14. Tyler Moore, who was a very good player, of, they call it a star position. It's like a, like a nickelback. He was injured, and C.J. Barnett was also injured, and so the, the true freshman is in there. Number two, Christian Bryant. Ryan from uh, Glenville High School in Cleveland, which has produced a lot of Buckeyes, including Ted Ginn, Dante Whitman, and Troy Smith. Also, the two guys that invented uh, Superman in DC Comics, they're from Glenville High School. Banks. What did he just say? for a loss on the play. <laughs> Steve Harvey, by the way, comedian, actor, yeah. also went to Glenville High School in Cleveland. I think the way you're dressed today has something to do with that last comment. What about Steve Harvey or comedian? <laughs> Both. Okay. Let's see if they go back and try to find Christian Bryant. Turner working on him one on one. They had success two previous plays. Here you see Christian Bryant in the slot. Yep, lined up right here. That's Turner. He's over. Chapel on third down. Broken up by Chequa. Pass was intended for true freshman Kofi Hughes. Imagine Indiana would go for it on fourth down. Nope, they're going to bring on the field goal unit. Wanted to get some points. chequa has been beat on his slant before, right there. Looks like he had that left arm hooked and maybe uh -huh. got away with a little early contact. Jimmy Chuckwood's a good football player. Corners are outstanding for the Ohio State Buckeyes, not only against the pass, but also the run. Mitch Ewald trying to get Indiana on the board, a 36-yard field goal try. And the Hoosiers will not get shut out today in Columbus. But it's still 38-3 Buckeyes. Now back in Columbus, a beautiful day. Temperature around 80 degrees. Great day to walk your dog if you're not watching Ohio State trounce Indiana here at the Horseshoe. 38 to 3. After a lot of people were wondering what was wrong with the Buckeyes after they only won by 11 at Illinois a week ago. I would say Indiana's getting ready for an onside kick based on that formation, but instead, Ewald kicks it deep. Maybe that's next time. Jamal Berry on the return. Berry out across the 30-yard line. Tackled at the 31. Three college football games coming up at 3.30 Eastern on ABC or ESPN. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Some of you will see Carolina Clemson or Arkansas A&M. Most of you will see Michigan State and Michigan. Should be a good one in Ann Arbor. Both teams unbeaten. It's nice to see that. Nice to hear you say that. What, both, both teams unbeaten? unbeaten. Yeah. Michigan is back. Michigan State is back. New quarterback for Ohio State, Joe Bozerman, who struggled in relief of prior when he went down with an injury last week. Ohio State will keep it on the ground to Carlos Hyde. He gets a good pickup on first and ten, about five yards. Should something happen to Terrell Pryor next week or the week after, this is an important time for Bozerman to get some very good playing experience. Right now, Bozerman, this, you know, everybody thinks it's, well, this is an important time for this kid. 
We're talking with the Ohio State coaches about him yesterday. They're not sure that he's figured it out yet. Thought he'd be a little bit further along. Kenny Guyton, a redshirt freshman out of Houston, is the number three quarterback. So as you said, good opportunity to change the coach's minds here for Bozerman. Run play high to the right side. He's going to get tagged about two yards in the backfield. Bozerman has been on the program for four years. He's a red shirt junior. Good tackle by Terrence Thomas there. One way to help him would be run the same offense that you run with Terrell Pryor. I mean, if you want him to run your offense and what your team does best, put him back in the gun and let him sling the rock. Bowserman, 25 years old. He was a minor league pitcher for a while before getting a chance to play at Ohio State. He's a junior. Throwing 17 passes this year. Third and seven. And Bowserman showing off the arm. That pass on the money to true freshman Corey Brown for an Ohio State first down at the 48. First of all, it starts with protection. Right there, Adam Holman does a good job of picking up the blitz. When you have time to step, set your feet, point that foot and arm toward the target, you can throw strikes. He's just got to get a little bit more consistent. And Coach Tressel understands that, but letting him throw the ball under game pressure is certainly going to help his growth and his confidence. Hide on the run into the secondary. Tripped up at the 40 after a 12-yard gain and an Ohio State first down. Uh, today belonged to Terrell Pryor, a personal best, 335 yards passing, only six incompletions, no interceptions. And again, people weren't sure after last week whether he'd be 100%, but he looked fine out there today. Bowserman takes the high snap. And what a great run by Jamal Berry inside the 20-yard line. Should have been tackled in the backfield, but Indiana couldn't bring him down. Defensive line almost got to Barry before Barry got to the hole. But again, this is instincts. Trusting your training. You see right there, Indiana had a good sniff on it, but Jamal Barry shows that little burst in vision. Little hurry up here by Ohio State. Barry inside the 15. We're going back to that last run by Barry. That, that's the ninth time today, guys, that Ohio State has had back to back plays of 10 yards or more. Indiana has zero. And if you're wondering why the hurry up, well, that's just something that Tress has in his offensive game plan. And he just wants to throw it in every now and then for the future opponents they'll have to get ready for. And also for perhaps the future for Bozerman if he has to play. And a chance to run Ohio State's offense. Inside run, Hyde, knocked down at the nine yard line. Carlos Hyde normally is not mentioned with the top four tailbacks and Boom Heron and Brandon Sane. Jordan Hall, Jamal Berry. He's a guy that's a tough runner, good sized kid, and nicked up a little bit. And Coach Tressel was planning on using him in a short yardage situation. Now he's getting some opportunities out in the field, but a big, powerful back Carlos Hyde brings. Third and two. Fumbled the ball. Indiana recovers. Recovered by Lenyatta Kyles at the two. Fred Jones forced the fumble for IU. That's one thing that Coach Trussell doesn't tolerate is those turnovers. Looked like the defensive man put an arm right on the football. That's Fred Jones. Kyle's with the recovery. Sometimes when you don't get a lot of reps, you get some carries, you get some carries, you do get a little bit careless in the ball game. And again, playing running back is much like any other position. You got to get a feel. The more carries you get, the more comfortable you get. If you haven't played in a while, sometimes those hits are a little bit harder. Even a knock on the arm can jar a ball loose. Good work here for Ohio State's defense, given the fact that most of the guys out there now are second teamers. Run play out to the five yard line. Check on the tackle of Burgess. 
Now, last week, Ben Chappell set the Indiana school record with 480 passing yards. Today, he's been held to 86. It's almost 400 fewer yards in one week's time. And that's that's just not all him. It's just some of the plays that he used last week aren't working this week. The little throw out to the wide receiver that picked up 10, 15, 20 yards last week didn't pick up anything this week. Jim Tressel, one quarter away from win number 100 at Ohio State. 38 3 Buckeyes. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. And we're eight days away from the unveiling of the first BCS standings on ESPN. Where will Ohio State be? Buckeyes go to Wisconsin next week. Ranked second in the AP poll. Entering today. And a 38-3 lead on Indiana as Burgess on second and seven goes nowhere. To the studio we go. Here's Reese. Dave, Sports Center right now presented by Discover this afternoon. Michigan State going to Ann Arbor to take on Michigan. There is Mark D'Antonio. He will be upstairs coaching from the press box against the Wolverines. 3.30 Eastern, ABC, ESPN, both teams undefeated. A report says Georgia's demise greatly exaggerated, at least when they're playing Tennessee. Look at Aaron Murray escape the rush and go in. He's accounted for four touchdowns. The dogs are pounding the ball 34-14. A.J. Green makes a difference out of that Georgia team now that he's eligible to play. Third and seven, Chapel from his end zone, and the pass is caught. First down, grabbed by freshman Deweese Wilson. Orion Johnson on the coverage. Nice job of dragging the feet as you see the tire tracks or the old tire rubber come up. Really nice play. Will throw him ball, his guy or no guy. Burgess, got to cut back. No running room. Jonathan Hankins, true freshman, made the tackle. He's, he's played a lot today. Yeah, he's a guy coming around. The more reps he gets, the better he gets. Talking with Jim Haycock, it's something uh, that they're looking forward to, to playing him more and more and more because he brings a little bit more of a pass rush than Dexter Larimore. But the more guys you have up front, obviously the more pressure you can put on an offensive line with fresh bodies. Chapel finds Turner, turns it upfield, takes a few shots, but pushes the pile to the first down marker at the 29. Looks like they're going to measure here. Now, guys, uh, mentioned that the first BCS standings come out next weekend. You think Ohio State is where it should be, ranked second right now? I think I, I think Jim Tressel and this stuff is just very happy to have all the conversation. And the talk be about Alabama, Boise State, and Oregon. You know, they're right there, too. Nobody's talking about them. And he's just building this squad game by game, improving, building his depth, getting his quarterback and all the timing, getting his all this stuff worked out. 5-0 and to start the season. The, the tougher schedule, part of their schedule, definitely comes the second half. But, but uh, Ohio State, nobody but talking about Ohio State in that top who knows, Ohio State could be number one after today if Alabama loses, which is possible at South Carolina. I think it's a week-to-week -week thing. I mean, last week, should they be ranked number two? No. After watching them this week, dominate a game like they're dominating against an offense that can put points up on the board and see Terrell Pryor set a career high, and I'm a voter, and I'm on the outside looking in, I say, absolutely, yes, they should be number two. There's not one dominant team or two dominant teams in college football this year. I think there's a lot of parity in the top ten. Alabama's not dominant? Not, not as dominant as teams of the past. Not as dominant as they were last year. The defense, not as good. Quarterback sneak on third and one. Ohio State's all over it. We'll see where they spot the football. 
actually Ross Holman timed the blitz. This is how you stop a quarterback sneak. If you could time your blitz with the snap and you meet them behind the line of scrimmage, it's tough to block because you're going to have those offensive linemen submarine and you have to go over the top and meet it. You see Ross Holman come into your screen and time the blitz nice. Actually, Brian Roll does a good job of setting it up, standing it up, and Ross Holman coming off the corner. See Brian Roll stand that quarterback up, timed it perfectly, and allowing your penetration from the outside to come in and get it. See how he gets excited when he talks about that stuff? <laughs> you move all the way over yeah, the, the other side of me. I'm coming I'll over right. where you are. I'll be all right. All right, now you guys, we're talking about Alabama. You say they're not dominant, so then their destruction of Florida last week, is that on Florida? I mean, Florida's just not that good, and I know we saw them week one, and they didn't look good in that game against Miami. I don't for, I don't think Florida is anywhere near what they were last year offensively or defensively and I think Alabama offensively is is better than they were last year they've got everybody back they've got the two running backs and the quarterback back and a lot of their other players defensively I think they're going to get better each week well Alabama is very good and you see Oregon come on and again teams are new Holt says it all the time it's a different team every week I mean, Oregon gave up 600 yards a week prior than last week against Stanford. They're the most explosive team I've ever seen in the world. <laughs> True freshman Corey Brown getting a chance to return a punt here. Oh. And he gets popped. Flag down, though. That's going to be kick catch interference. It was a muffed punt. Loose back at the five-yard line. Recovered by Ohio State, but Kofi Hughes interfered. Hard to tell if... Brown signal for a fair or catch or shading not. his eyes. Yeah, That's, you saw his hand was up by his eyes. I don't know if he was signaling for the fair catch or shading his eyes. I think he's shading his eyes here. Okay, right there. That see, that's not a fair Kick catch. catch interference. Oh. Number 15. Hmm. 15 yards penalty. First down. Yeah, he's got to give him a chance to catch the football, and that's what the defender did not do. We saw that called enough last week at Clemson <laughs> kick catch interference. I think we had three calls in that game last week. 38-3 Ohio State. Back in Columbus, all Ohio State. 38-3 over Indiana. And the number three quarterback, Kenny Guyton, getting an opportunity to play. A redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. He'll hand it off to Jamal Berry. He gets to midfield for about five as we check him with Reese. Jamal Berry, the ball carrier. On between Syracuse and South Florida after the Cuse had taken a 6-3 lead on a field goal, Lindsey Lamar, Skip Holtz's team, goes 94 on the kickoff return. Extra point was blocked. It's 9-6 in the fourth quarter. Now Big East up for grabs, maybe? Or is West Virginia a clear-cut team to beat right now as Barry picks up the first down to the 41-yard line, tackled by Chad Shear. Look back at our cheap drive recap, the last Ohio State touchdown. Posey with an excellent game today as Terrell Pryor threw only six incompletions. The direct snap on the wild Buckeye, I guess you could call it, Dan Heron, his second touchdown. They didn't call it the Wildcat at Rutgers last night. It was the Wild Knight, so I'm just guessing Ohio State has a different name for it as well. Soon to be obsolete. Very inside the 40. Picks up maybe two. I think in the NFL you'll see the disappearance of the Wildcat. These teams catch up to it. You have to adjust. Kenny Guyton has some promise, guys. He can throw the football. He had a nice spring down here for Jim Trussell and his staff. Has a chance. Also a very good runner of the ball. And has trouble with that one. The snap was high. That might have been a little bit easier for a guy six feet six inches tall to catch that one. We were practiced the other day and that was happening a lot too with the backup center in there. Snaps were high. And it carries over to the ball games. And then while we were at practice, we saw uh, Archie Griffin came out and said hello. What a what a great guy, huh? 
Chris is the best. Any anytime I see him, I said, yeah, I think two Heisman trophies. I said, you know, we've had Tim Tebow won it as a sophomore, Sam Bradford won it as a sophomore, Mark Ingram won it as a sophomore, and none of these guys, nobody has ever done what Archie Griffin did. Pretty amazing. Guyton to throw on third and 19. Everybody covered, and Guyton just forces it in there, and it's intercepted by Jeff Thomas. He was trying to hit Barry and threw a pick. And I think that's when you're a backup quarterback. And we saw this with Joe Bowserman last week. When you get an opportunity, you just want to make something happen. Instead of making a proper decision to throw one in the dirt or throw one incomplete or throw one away, you just want to show that I can make this throw. And you want to show the coaches, you want to show the fans, your teammates, I can make it. And I end up throwing a pick. And I don't get this opportunity very often. So yep. I got to take advantage of what the time I'm here. So maybe you try to do things that you shouldn't do. That was a great pick, yeah, too. Yeah, it's a good pick, and right there, when it's a fight for the football, you got to hope your guy can get it. Jeff Thomas stole it away. New quarterback for Indiana, Dusty Keel, freshman from Columbus, Indiana. He's throwing five passes on the year, hands off to Zach Davis Walker, and a loss on the play. Keel's uncle Blair, you guys might remember him. He was a quarterback in Notre Dame. I sure do. Number five, right? Was he number five? Number five <laughs> or number six? Uh, that's my whole thing. I'm all about the numbers, man. <laughs> Ask me a question, I'll answer it. <laughs> Who, what number was this guy? Yeah. I understand he is number five. We're Thank you. Being told that he did wear number five. I just asked Joe. He knows everything. Second down and 11 for Indiana. Play fake and Keel going downfield to pass high and broken up. And a flag down. They're going to get Travis Howard. Helmet to helmet. Mm, I think if you make contact with the head, I mean, we saw this up in Cleveland. I don't know if you guys saw the TJ Ward hit. There's a shot. Yeah, he launched into him, launched into his helmet. Yeah, but he hit him, he hit him with the helmet, did he? Or his yeah. forearms to the back? like a forearm and the he there was helmet to helmet contact so forget the forearm there was helmet to helmet contact and he launched into him he left his feet well, you, you can't leave your feet not if you launch and you hit him in the head personal foul targeting the defenseless player number 18 15 yard penalty results in an automatic first down and I know there are certain defensive players that this just drives crazy this emphasis slash rule mm -hmm. but well, I, I agree. What do you think? Was that illegal? I, I agree. That the, by the rule, it should have been called. But the offensive guy was up here trying to catch the ball, and he came down, and, and where the defensive man's helmet was, they just collided. I mean, if the offensive guy would have stayed up higher, he wouldn't have hit helmet to helmet. Keels pass high again intended for Wilson. Well, Randy Moss is back in Minnesota thanks to Chris's brother Rick Spielman, the uh, GM of the Vikings, made the trade with New England to get Moss, and Moss back playing an AFC East team, uh, the Jets. Some of those guys, uh, corners talking smack to Moss, saying he didn't play hard in their recent game. ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern, Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's, starts things at 7. Very interesting what Brett Favre had to say in one comment I saw. It puts pressure on me because I've got to get him the ball. Keel taken off, gets a block, and then gets upended at the 32. And Brett is one of the guys that will throw the ball downfield. And if he sees coverage one on one, well, that's nothing. I'll throw it there. Even two on one, you have the confidence in your receiver to go up and at least knock the ball down if you're not going to catch it. This is just my observation. No inside information or anything like that. To me, observing Brett Favre look disinterested in this season. I think this move gets him interested and re-engaged in trying to win a Super Bowl well, because the Vikings know their window is closing. It's a short window. He may be disinterested because he didn't have Rice, the wide receiver, and he didn't have a healthy Percy Harvin. Keel's pass on third down, a good one. It's caught for a first down at the 25 by Hughes. And I think this also shows the disappointment in Bernard Berry, who just hasn't clicked well with, uh, with Favre. His numbers are not good since Favre came to Minnesota. I think the team that the Vikings had last year was the best team offensive anyway that Brett Favre has ever played on. Mm. Oh, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Again, he had Sidney Rice. 
who hopefully they'll get back as a year. But uh, Randy Moss gives him a downfield threat. You have a downfield threat. That's going to open things up for Shianko. That's going to open things up even more for Adrian Peterson. What about the loss of Chester Taylor, too? They miss him. Run play to the 22 yard line for Banks. Remember, Taylor used to spell Peterson a lot, but. No, it's yeah. still early in the year. It's only three games into the season. And the Packers have some guys hurt on defense, so it's a big game for Minnesota. Meanwhile, the Jets playing well. Mark Sanchez, his quarterback rating's over 100. Yeah, he's playing outstanding. One of the reasons is you got a, a rebirth or somebody that is interested in playing football with Danny Tomlinson coming over for the Chargers. Is there a salary cap this year? I mean, the Jets, can they just go out and sign anybody they want? I mean, there's not, yeah, you're all set. It's on caps. You can so go, go spend So everything. they're like the Yankees. They're like the Yankees. They go out and, you know, whatever. Just go out and buy, get as many players as you want. Teal. His pass high again, but it's caught. A beautiful catch by Ted Bolzer inside the two yard line. The coach has talked a lot about Bolzer this week, but that's his first catch of the game. Bolzer is a redshirt freshman playing for the first time this year. Came into the game with 10 receptions right at the top of your screen, and four of those were for touchdowns. Banks hit at the line of scrimmage and dumped. Storm Klein made the tackle. Storm Klein has a bright future there, apparent to Brian Roll, linebacker, atoning for his past mistake. Bolzer, he, that was his man in the cover two. He had to carry Bolzer down, let him go too early, Keel hit him, but he comes in and does a nice job of filling the hole and getting a tackle for loss. Crowd on its feet wants Ohio State to keep Indiana without a touchdown. Banks trying to push the pile. Third effort, and they rule him down at the one yard line. So where the knee goes down here, there, and the ball is not crossing the plate. This is where. The big fellas up front, when the ball's this close, you have to submarine and get lower than the Indiana offensive lineman. Also, Indiana has to get that push by getting lower than the Ohio State defensive line. They'll try Banks again. Actually, two guys had it. And they're in. Touchdown. The linesman says touchdown. He had Keel and Banks both holding the ball. <laughs> Keel let go. And I guess Banks got in, barely. Because he got pushed back. Two guys have it right there. <laughs> Keel's like, give it to me. Yeah. I don't want the touchdown. It looked like it did break the plane. The ball only has to break the plane, the white over the white line. Yeah, that certainly is a touchdown. Well, they're going to stop it and review it further. Really, guys, is 38 to 9. Is under further review. Back in a moment, we'll see whether this stands. Ruling in the field is confirmed. It is a touchdown. Jim Tressel challenged that normally. If it's coming from upstairs, the officials, because it does not have an impact directly on the outcome of the game, they'll usually just say, no, we're not going to challenge that or we're not going to review that any further. But because Tressel challenged it, they honor the challenge. But it's a touchdown. And the point after makes it 38 to 10. So with five minutes plus remaining on the clock, we're going to look at Ohio State's number three quarterback, Kenny Guyton. I mean, that's a half a touchdown each there for the two guys. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000-mile, five-year powertrain limited warranty. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there you have the world's largest meatball, a record of 750 pounds at the Columbus Italian, uh, the St. John's Italian Festival here in Columbus. The meatball weighed in at 556 pounds. Actually, we're being told it didn't set the record now, so a typo it did not set the record. That was a meatball? Don't ever tie as you're going for the world record if you can't get the record. <laughs> got crushed by 200 pounds. Come on. That was Spielman's appetizer <laughs> before lunch. Barry, good return. Out across the 35. There's a flag down. Barry brought down at the 39. Holding. Number 41. Receiving team. 10 yard penalty. First down. All right, let's go to the studio, check in with the Reese. All right, Dave, I know a guy that wants a helmet sticker on college football final. It's Taylor Potts, the Baron Badge. Potts, well over 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, 45-31 Red Raiders up. They're not even to the fourth quarter yet. And Air Force. Let's give the Falcons some love. One three-point loss to Oklahoma on the season. They're on top of Colorado State by two touchdowns. Now, how about Air Force looking to go to five and one and three and zero in conference play? Running play on first down and trying to stay in bounds was high. He could not. He stepped out, but he did get the first down. Joe Bozerman is back in at quarterback. He was in there for a series, and then they brought Kenny Guyton in at QB, but he threw an interception. So they go back to Bozerman. Trying to figure out why Carlos Hyde stepped out of bounds. One. You want to keep the clock running, obviously, and two, it looked like he had enough room to cut it, but he had too much speed going one way. You know, that's a difference in back. He's a straight ahead Ed, as opposed to a guy like Heron or Sane or Jamal Berry. Just a little bit more shifty. Carlos Hyde is one direction and go. Hyde, a Richard freshman from Naples, Florida. This time, Hyde may not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Deontay Mack made the tackle. Well, guys, we talked about Ohio State and whether it's a BCS championship contender. Maybe too early to tell with some of the games they have coming up. Who do you think is their biggest challenger in the Big Ten based on what you guys have seen through the first month of the season? Well, I think it's close between right now Iowa and Wisconsin. Obviously, Michigan can score points, but I don't know what they're going to do defensively. Right now, I would say Wisconsin. And I know people always give me the fisheye when I say that, like you just did, but I think athletically they're pretty good defense, defensively, and Scott Tolzien can throw the ball and is capable of big nights. Then when, you have, the yeah, then when you have a kid like James Smith and then, of course, John Clay, where you're able to run the football, that's a that's a tough team to yeah, defend. James White. James White, thank you. Did you give him the fish eye? Yeah, he did. A little bit. <laughs> he always Let does. Wisconsin that. just Let lost. Let me see the fish eye. They just lost yeah, to Michigan I'm, State I'm last week. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, watch next week. It's going to be a great game in Madison. I, I like Iowa. I, I really do. Uh, and that's just not taking the opposite of what Chris yeah. is doing. I like Iowa. I like their offense, and I really like their defense. I like Iowa, too. I mean, they're good. No, neither of you guys have said Michigan State, which is undefeated. And, you know, if it wins at Michigan today, maybe that will change your opinion. A pitch to a Hyde out to the 33-yard line, close to the first down. Mark, Mark D'Antonio has done a great job. Michigan State does not play Ohio State this year. Don't forget tonight, Saturday Night Football on ABC. One of the great rivalries in college football renewed as Ja'Cory Harris in Miami face Christian Ponder in Florida State. Some of you on the West Coast will see USC against Andrew Luck at Stanford. Boy, if Ja'Cory Harris, if you have good Ja'Cory Harris or bad Ja'Cory Harris, I mean, we're capable of seeing both. 90% of Within it, two series. 90% <laughs> of Ja'Cory Harris I like. That other 10% just drives me up the wall. He, but you know what? There's not there's not a backup that's a threat to him. So that's true. But that's part of their offense. So they say, just Corey, go ahead and make a tough throw. Let your receivers go make a play. Yep. Now Florida State can get after the quarterback, so it could be interesting to watch some of the decisions that Harris makes tonight when facing pressure as Buchanan's punt will roll inside the 20. Let's go to the studio. Here's Reese. Good yeah, job today, Dave, on Syracuse and USF. South Florida, Ryan Nassib, Marcus Sales, and the Orange trying to go to 4-1. and one. So are the Bulls, by the way. 13-9, getting deep in the fourth. 
Is Syracuse back? Loose. That'd be obviously a big win. Doug Marone trying to get that program turned around after struggling under Greg Robinson. By the way, Illinois has defeated Penn State as the third quarterback, Edward Wright Baker, is in there. Freshman from Jeffersonville, Indiana, throws an incompletion. Big win for Ron Zook. Yeah. Huge win. Big. After playing Ohio State tough at home last week, the Illini go to Penn State. Big win. Sends a message to the rest of the Big Ten. We watched them on film. They're a pretty solid football team. Yeah. Corey legit defensive tackle gave Ohio State a lot of problems last week. Chris, you talked earlier about Martez Wilson. That's one thing he can do is recruit. Turner banged that a play near the first down marker. We got Northwestern that's unbeaten. Illinois with a big win today. You guys talked about Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan State. Who knows how good Michigan is based on its defense? Remember, they got off to a great start last year and then struggled. Will it be a repeat of that, or is Denard Robinson just too good for that to happen? There's a couple of things that, that I'm really worried about with Michigan, and that is the health of Denard Robinson. At any, he gets hit every play he carries that football. That could stop at any time. And secondly is their defense. They have just given up too many points. Turner lost the ball. Looked like he got it back, though. He did at the 36-yard line. Well, you got, uh, I mean, I think the Big Ten is, is very competitive. You know, you had, uh, had Fitzgerald and Coach Brewster saying Minnesota could very well be 5-0. Now, I don't believe that, but he believes it. Maybe his guys believe it, so that maybe will keep them competitive next week. Purdue's had some injuries. We'll see Purdue in Minnesota next week. That's in West Lafayette. Purdue's got a lot of injuries at the quarterback position in particular as Wright Baker gets out of trouble. Gets a block, too, and then, boy, he took a shot. And the fans here thought that he was hit short of the first down marker. But Storm Klein looked like he did get him after. And a flag on the play. Yep. Personal foul. Targeting to the head. Number 32 in the defense. Second time that's been called here in the fourth quarter. Let's see, does uh, he launch? Man, boy, wow. That's tough. If you're a defensive guy, you're, you're taught to tackle with, don't put your head down, keep it up, right? Yeah. Yes. Hit with your eyes, see yeah. what you hit, hit what you see. He didn't leave his feet. No, I don't know. Yeah, what are you going to do? Let's put flags on everybody and call it a day. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And what if you go low? He dies over you for the first down. You got to go high. Start kneecapping everybody. Apparently. Right, Baker going deep. Broken up. Nice throw. Jamon Chester, the intended receiver. Travis Howard in coverage. 20 suit, two seconds left in the game. I like that throw by the young man. He got the ball down the field. Gave him a chance to make a play. Do you guys think it's becoming harder and harder for the officials to call that because there is such an emphasis on player safety? Well, I don't think it's getting harder for them to call it. They just call what they see. Uh, you know, they didn't write the rule. They just they're just out there enforcing Ohio it. State. But I but you know the, behind that rule is the safety timeout. thing. I mean. If the guy doesn't get up, if you hit him in the head and he doesn't get up and he has a concussion or some paralysis, that's that's where this all comes from. I understand the intent of the rule. Safety first. I'm all about it. I wear my seatbelt everywhere I go. But this is a football game. And eventually, you're going to be, things happen in a split second. And there's times where there's going to be contact, contact. Now, in a fourth and one or third and one like that, if he comes in low, all the guy has to do is go over top and get the first down. There's times when you have to tackle high. And if you keep your head up and you hit with your face mask accidentally, you're going to have much less of a chance to have any type of head injury or paralysis, as Bob said. But eventually, you got to let him play. He's not defenseless. He sees the guy coming. And again, he, he didn't launch. He didn't leave his feet and launch into the uh, defender as the pass is uh, dropped along the sideline by Chester. 
Pass looked like it was there, though, from Wright Baker. And here's another point. Now, if you, you would talk to Wright Baker, would you like that shot high, or do you want him to come in and, and shoot your knees? What do you think he would prefer? I'm thinking, he's a big kid. Come on, let's go high. I don't know what you do. I mean, you don't get mad at Storm Klein. In fact, you might give him a medal. <laughs> or at least a Buckeye leaf. <laughs> Of the backfield by Nick Turner. Out of bounds, stopping the clock with nine seconds and left. Right well, probably the final play of the game. Jim Trestle getting win number 100 at Ohio State. The third fastest in Big Ten history to do it in game number 121. Fielding Yost and Bo Schembechler both did it in 119 games. Pretty amazing what Coach Trestle has done here with the Buckeyes. Five straight Big Ten titles. As the pass is intercepted inside the five-yard line. Picked off by Dominic Clark with two seconds left. Tressel, 100 wins at Ohio State. He was a player at Baldwin Wallace for his late father, Lee, when he won his 100th game. And Jim said that means more to him than this, only because he's in the middle of the season. His dad, still a lot of games left. His dad won national championships at Baldwin Wallace. And uh, Tress won national championships at Youngstown State and won the championship here in 0-2. And certainly looked impressive today, beating Indiana 38 to 10. Remember, the Hoosiers put up 35 points last week. Didn't get points until late in the fourth quarter. College football scoreboard presented by Acura is up next. For Bob and Chris, I'm Dave, now to Reese, Mark, and Lou in the studio.